Hey everyone, Hunter back again for part two of the wood graining technique. Um, what I have done since um, the first video that we worked on is this is the piece that we sprayed in the first video. The only thing that is different to it right now is I actually cut uh, a couple lines in here so I can break this off when we're done. And um, once this the base color that we sprayed in video one dried, I went ahead and put a, a very light mist coat of um, testers lacquer over top of it. That seals down these acrylic paints um, for the next step that we're going to do. And the next step is since we're simulating a, a hardwood floor, um, what I decided to do was just take a random piece of plastic that I have that you know I just had laying around here, and I'm going to use that for my width on my boards. Um, but remember, uh, this here would be grossly out of scale. If, say if this was 125th scale, it would be grossly out. Uh, 125th scale, you'd be using something about, oh, about a third of the distance that I'll be using in this, this demonstration. Uh, but the same thing, you can adjust this to, um, you know, any width that you want. I have a couple things over here. Um, like, I, you know, I have a piece of quarter around here if you want to do a, a real close, um, line. You can use a piece of quarter around, uh, you know, or you can use this piece of square that I have here. But what we're going to use is just this random piece of uh, plastic that I have. And I already have one line down on here. I just wanted to make sure everything was dry and, and ready to go. But uh, all you're going to do is take your, your piece of plastic that you have and you want to line it up and take a number two pencil and you don't want to get the point. You, you, you want to actually hold the pencil kind of like this right here and just kind of drag the pencil back the edge of the plastic just like that. And then we're just going to slide it over, line it back up against your line you just made. And same thing, you don't want to put a lot of pressure on the pencil, just enough to make your mark. And we'll go ahead and do this all the way across so when we're done it, it kind of, you know, represents a hardwood floor. So we're almost there. I don't think the last board's going to be even, but yeah, it'll work for the tutorial. I didn't measure all this out and everything, but if I was doing it for one of my models, it would all be measured out before I decided what uh, width um, board I was going to use. Now, um, there's with me being a flooring installer, um, I have a lot of experience in this, so uh, there's a couple things that you can do at this point. I'll uh, hold it up here and let you see the lines that we put in it. That is the division lines for each individual board. Um, there is a pattern called random in laying hardwood or any other flooring uh, that is, you know, multi-pieces. Or you can do uh, what they call a bricklay technique. Now, a bricklay technique is basically um, you would come across this board. Say this board right here, we want to split it. You just want to draw a line across there, just like that. Now, if you were doing a bricklay pattern, you would skip the next one and then come to the, the third one over and draw that line across in the same area that you did this one. And then you would skip and do it again. And then you would come up here on the ones that you skipped and put a line in, and then skip and then put a line in. That is what they call a bricklay pattern. Um, that is where all your boards are um, the same length. Uh, what I like to do when I'm creating hardwood, you know, style uh, finishes is I like to do random. And random is just a matter of coming in and just like it sounds. You just want to come in and randomly put your lines in. You don't want a pattern. You don't want the lines to line up with each other. Um, another thing you have to remember when you're doing this is to calculate your board length on how long it actually needs to be. And uh, you have to keep that in mind when you're when you're putting your lines down. But like I say, all I'm doing right now is just doing a random uh, board pattern across here. And yes, I'm doing this freehand. You can come in with a square if you need to. Um, 
you know, for you guys that don't have a real steady hand or are not real uh, good at drawing, um, I do recommend using a, a little square on this. It makes it a little bit easier to create a straight line. And just to show you what I mean is basically just come in with your um, your little square, line it up on your long vertical line, and just mark the top of it. That's all you have to do. Nothing hard about it. Um, you can do it that way. Okay, so I'll hold it up here. Now we have our random board uh, links all done there. So the next thing that I, that I do at this point is I will take my pencil and on these darker dots that we made, I'll basically come in and just kind of sketch the pencil around that line and just drag it down a little bit. You know, nothing real heavy. You don't want to. You don't want to bear into the plastic or anything like that. All you're doing is just basically creating the darker lines that are in the knots in the wood. Um, you know, basically, you're almost making like a teardrop style. You know, mark with your pencil is all you're doing. And on your random, you know, long knots that you have, you're just, you know, kind of following the outline of them. And, you know, I'll come in in some areas and take the pencil and actually, you know, kind of darken in like one side of it. And you just do that on, on most of your dark spots that you put in, that you find in each individual board. And it's nothing hard. It doesn't have to be perfect because no piece of wood is going to be the same or look the same. Well, it may look the same, but it won't be identical um, unless it's a printed style pattern that's on top of it. So at that point there, let me hold it up here and see if you can see that. Um, you can see the knots where I just ran the pencil around them. They came out pretty decent. Now the next step that I do is just kind of come in and make some random lines. Now one thing that you need to remember in this, to make this look realistic, when you're doing one of these knots, and that knot comes to your cross uh, line that you put in here, you want to stop that. You don't want the... Um, don't extend your pencil mark onto the next board. Cut it off at that division joint. Um, so keep that in mind when you're doing and especially when you're doing this part here. Now the next thing I do is sometimes I'll come in, depending on what I'm trying to create, and I'll just come in and put some random lines, not straight, and not all the same pattern, and some of them are a little darker than others, some of them are lighter, but whenever you're doing this, like I say, don't cross over your division line that you have for your board because then that makes it look fake at the end. So we're just, you know, just drawing some little lines in here. And I mean, you can put a V in it if you want to. Um, you know, none of this has to be exactly perfect. You just want it random. The more you try to create a pattern, the more it's going to look, you know, manufactured and fake. So just, you know, randomly go through and do this. And we've almost got it here. All right, let me hold it up here and I'll show you what we have. That's where we're at now. You can see the random marks that I put in that. They are very light. You don't want to bear down on your pencil because it will eat into the, uh, into the finish. And if you take the... Uh, the base coat off for any reason, uh, you're going to have to touch it up. So definitely to have a light pressure with your pencil, but that gives you an idea of where we're at right now. And as far as all of your um, your pencil work and your line division and all that, we're done. This stage is done right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video off on this stage. Uh, on the next stage, we will be doing the uh, clear orange from Tamaya over top of this. And um, that should pretty much finish up our panel. 
So, um, if you have any questions or concerns on the first video or this one, uh, please leave a, a question or a comment, and I'll be more than glad to help you out with any questions or whatever that you do have about this technique. So, uh, as always, I thank you for watching this one, and stay tuned for part three coming up real soon. Bye-bye.